Hey guys, welcome to the shop. We are back to work on this old craftsman um, arch top, big guitar, single cutaway. You've seen this before in an episode list called Where's Chick Flick Teal Pointer? East LA Cutaway. We're going to add uh, this episode onto that playlist. Now, we did an opening where we went down, I found this in East LA hanging on a wall in a garage, hot, cold, as cold as LA gets, but dried out. And the problem with it was, yeah, the neck comes off of the V pocket. So we decided to have my friend Laurent Bompart do some artwork and make this very cool pit guard, custom pit guard. And there's an episode in that playlist about that. But we're, what we're going to do right now in this episode is get down into the inevitable repair that needed to be done. And that is this cannot be like this. So we're going to put this part back on here. Now, we're going to learn a lot about shimming and what kind of tools you need to repair this and how to glue it up. But most importantly, we are going to bolt this thing with a steel bolt and nut so it will never come apart again. Now, you might ask yourself, why are you doing that? Well, the people that like my guitars actually like them to look this way. Old, beat up, I'm going to do some of my usual stuff to it. But when it's done, it needs to play, it needs to be durable, and it needs to be unique. And we're going to make sure it's all of that. There are a couple of uh, surface cracks on here. This is kind of like that restaurant junk pile we did. Let's give a card up there right about now. Because there are two big tone bars that run through this, I'm going to put a pickup on here. And we're going to do something special with the volume control and tone control, but we'll get to that in another episode. Anyway, let's get to the bench and figure out how we're going to put this neck back where it needs to be and line it up this way and this way and this way. Let's go. Okay, guys, let's start off by taking a closer look at the patient here. Um, the binding on the sides of the fretboard tell us this, this was a good guitar somebody put some time into building it i think the neck cut loose simply because it dried out and the hide glue um, cut loose um, but you can see for example when we pull that binding back right there there's a ledge cut into here and the corners all match up and everything so this was a good guitar now as we look here there's some stuff that's stuck with the hide glue and it was glued on. And you'll notice that there is no, really no hide glue back here in this area, but all the glue is right here. And that you can see a shim right here. So somebody come in, and if you look closely, this is beveled down. It's not flat, so it fits into a groove. And you can see, I want to mess up my setup here, but there is a back slant on that channel can you see that right there and so part of the whole secret of this is to make sure that there's a back channel on whatever we touch up so what we're going to do is we're going to use a number of tools here to get this back where it needs to be there's a lot of junk down in here from over time you can see that we're not not going to let that there we're going to have to shim some things to get this right and then we're just going to basically put this on here clamp it and make sure it's sitting right this way this way and this way and we want to remember this has a truss rod in it so it's a good guitar there's a there's a shot at the headstock we don't want to cover that up we are going to put some different tuners on here some better tuners some high dollar tuners but um in terms of what it looks like we are not going to fix it up that much. We're going to matchbook the neck and make it East LA. Now, one of the things I want to tell you before we get into this is we are going to bolt the neck. So one of the things I need to know is how far into the body does this piece of wood go? And that will inform us as to how long that bolt needs to be because it's going to sit with a washer and a nylon insert 
inside the guitar back into here. Now, I want to point out something to you. When we look at this part of the neck, it heals up pretty quickly and it radi radiuses very quickly. It almost comes to a point right there. So, if I went into a spot, well, it was, this was on the guitar and was trying to drill in here, I might be tempted to go where it's a little bit flatter because that might be easier to drill. Now, I want you to notice that if I use this as a guide, I'm going to put my hand, I'm going to put my finger right here. There is no wood behind this part of the neck and it doesn't start till there. So I would have to get down at least that far before I hit any wood. And then I want you to notice that this part comes to a point here. And if I miss drilling in straight, which is going to be hard to do because this is radius, if I miss drilling in straight and I hit over here, it's going to bust this off. I need to be way down in here. So I'm going to have to inform where my hole is going to be by drilling a pilot hole here and measuring out from the center before I glue the neck on. That way, once the neck is on and it's glued up, that hole out here is going to finally let me go in this way. So you want to drill the pilot hole first and then glue the neck on and then reinforce it with the bolt later. And I'll show you what that looks like as we go here. Let me clear this guitar out of the way and I'll show you some of the supplies we're going to need. Okay, let's start with this. It's very possible that we are going to need some thin shims to get that neck right once we clean all the old gunk out of it. So I have some of this veneer stripping and it is glue on the back. It's heat activated glue. Now you can heat this up with an iron or whatever or you can heat it up very quickly with, where is it, a heat gun. So you have a heat gun by, you cut your strips, you get them all where they need to be, the, the, the level that they need to be, the width that they need to be, you get them sanded. You're going to have a plethora of sandpaper around. I keep mine in a portfolio. I've got everything in here from 60 grit up to 1500 grit. I can access the stuff, but I got a few pieces around here. I've got 400 and 600 right here. And so when I get these shims cut, what's going to end up happening is I am going to get everything ready to go to the guitar and then I'll be sanding and doing this a little bit like this much is going to tilt the neck one way back or the other and then you're going to have fretting problems later so shimming material is nice we're going to need things to clamp the guitar without breaking it you know that the, the neck and the fingerboard are radiused on this guitar they're not flat like a cigar box guitar so when I clamp I'm going to clamp down into this area I'm going to need some cork paper stacked up. This is adhesive cork paper stacked up, but the last one turned the other way. I can put this on here, put pressure down by using corked neck cutoffs like this, and it will apply pressure and it will adjust itself and compensate. If you put a flat board on here like this and push down, it's going to go one way or the other and it's going to glue up crooked. So you're going to have cork paper wide enough to go across the radius neck and corked boards, neck cutoffs that are straight so you can flip them upside down and glue one. And so you can clamp like so. This will be at the bottom of the body. This one will be at the top. And then, of course, we'll use spool clamps. And I did an episode about how to make these economically. And this is what will clamp the neck down once we're done. Um, we are going to for sure need some chisels. We want to do work with chisels. They need to be sharp chisels. And they need to be the size you need. You don't need some big giant chisel. So I got a quarter inch ch chisel and a half inch chisel here. And then I'm going to want to make sure that those are sharp all the time. So I've got a wet stone or a, a sharpening stone that's 400 grit on one side, 1200 grit on the other. Well, let me show you something here. If I start like this, you want to remember that the thinner your chisel tip is, the more difficult it is to get a straight edge on it because you have a tendency to want to be turning this way or this way. I don't want to be reaching over things like this when I'm sharpening my chisels. I want to make sure that my work area 
is nice and flat where I can flatten this down and I just drag back and forth like this. Now I'm going to turn over every once in a while and look, is it equally shiny everywhere along that edge, same way up here. You don't have to push real hard, you're just, you can see it taking off a little bit of the surface of this stone and again, bounce it across the light. Make sure that that, if one of this is dull, it's not sharpening um, properly. But it doesn't hurt to check your chisels every once in a while because you're basically want to go down into that neck when you're taking this stuff off. You want this chisel, you see how that fits right in there without going up to the edge? I'm going to want to follow that bevel like this. You see that there? And I'm going to want to make sure that it's not slipping off or whatever. A sharp chisel is a handy tool. One that's not is just very dangerous. So we've got a way to sharpen our chisels. We've got the chisels we need. So again, cork paper is the best adhesive cork paper. You can make padding. You can radius your stuff. Um, the stuff over, let me show you if I can get this body up here. This will sit here. I want to put that there. Then I can put my other one over the top like this. Of course, I'm going to pull this pick guard up and clamp to this without damaging anything. Of course, this would look like this. You with me so far? Okay. What else do we have here? We are going to use hide glue. The hide glue is in a heater. Hide glue is meant to activate when it's warm. I got a little bit of water in the bottom of that so I don't burn everything up and crack the glass. But this is in a bottle and... I use an acid brush or a flux brush, whatever you want to call them. They're relatively economical. They have a metal handle. You can cut these off. But this, once it's heated up, will give me the ability to work everything down into the pocket and onto the neck joint and still have a little bit of time to work and make sure everything is lined up this way and that way. So I think that... Um, we pretty much got everything in order and ready to start work. Okay, a lot of this is working backwards. So, remember I mentioned a little bit earlier that if I look at the front of this, and this were on the guitar, and I was thinking I should just bolt this like so. This part is quite a bit down there that much. I actually have to get into there right here before I start at zero, and then this part is curved to the point where, remember, it's beveled, so on the inside it's pretty thin. It's thinner than here. So I really want to get down into there, which puts us way up here. Anyway, I want to get where I've measured, use the metric system, come down here and figure it out that everything is right there. So I'm going to end up, again, being out into here. But drilling this after it's on the neck, these are unknowns, and I've seen a few tear aparts and fixes on other channels where somebody has come in and done this and found out that the big problem of why a neck cut loose is somebody bolted it when it started to come loose like this on the guitar and then broke this out. So we want to know that that hole to be drilled through is there. Now the next thing we, we're going to have to worry about is what kind of bolt do we want to use um, and how is it going to stay on there and how are we going to get it in and how long is it going to be? Let me show you this. I like using bolts like this. I like a shoulder, a bolt, or a washer that just barely fits over it that makes it for a shoulder That because we're going to countersink uh, the top of the hole to house the head of the bolt where it sits down in there. We'll hide it with a piece of relic wood. But on the inside of the guitar, you basically have to use lights and a camera but I use nylon insert nuts so they never come loose. And then, of course, I got a washer behind that. Now, this bolt is probably going to have to be about this long. So once I got my holes drilled and everything is back, so we'll drill through here. And when it comes time, when the neck is glued on, we put the bolt in. Let me show you a little trick. You can take a piece of coat hanger. It's got to be, and you bend the end over and when you bend the end over, it can't be so much that it won't fit through the hole that you drilled for the bolt, if you follow me. 
So once this is glued on, you drill your hole. Again, once it's on, you're going to drill your hole this way because you'll have a pilot hole showing you where to go. Then once it's on inside the guitar, you take this and push it through until it's free. And then you turn it just a little bit and pull it, and it will hang the edge of the hole. And that part that's sticking out, the resulting part there, you just take a piece of tape and put it here. And that will tell you what size bolt you need from the hardware store. Are you with me? Did you see that piece of tape? I want to show you something really cool. This is the coolest tape holder you can have, especially when you're doing binding jobs. You flip this back, it's got a place for you to put your finger down in here, grab the tape and pull it, and you can do tape jobs, binding jobs, whatever you need. So this thing is very cool. Find one. You can't live without okay, it. I have measured and marked off where I'm going to want to be. I keep telling you this is impossible to do from the outside. That radius comes to a point. It gets broad down in here. You start trying to drill here without some reference point. You're going to be off to the side and that will chip everything out. So I want to show you something else. I've used this 100,000 times. It's a little countersink tool. I have found the middle. I press that right there. And you see I get that little divot right there, that little cup. So when I go to put a drill bit in there, I don't have to worry about seating or drifting. I just put it down in that cup. You see that? It just drops right in there. I hold my drill straight. We're doing this live. We only got one shot at it. There we go. That right there is where our hole will be when we drill all the way through once the neck is on. Okay, I've got this hole all the way through now. And that's all we need to worry about right now is it's all the way through. And before I get to working on gluing the neck back together, I'm just going to take my countersink tool and get that worked out where when it's time to put the bolt in, I can just come in with a tad bigger bit or a Forstner bit and create a collar right there and then put that in. But we're all set right now. That's good. We will know that when we put this on, we will have a hole once everything is glued up and, is, and solid that it will go through. The neck is in place. We don't want to use the bolt to place the neck while it's gluing. But once everything is in place, we put that through, drill a hole in here and cover this up. And you'll never know it's there unless you want to know it's there and then everything will be solid forever now without giving away trade secrets on how to use a chisel that's been around since I don't know BC um, we're gonna go along now and make sure that the old glue and everything we're gonna make sure that there's nothing sticking up or over here like so we're gonna go ahead and work all this get all this stuff off here with a scraper and then work our final shims that we've got in here down to the point where we can take a piece of 400 grit sandpaper and go over everything with nothing hanging up. That's what we want. I think that's a good test. 400 grit sandpaper. Now, you want to make sure that wherever there has been glue, you come along and everything is nice and smooth. Um, don't forget there's a bevel on these. You want to keep that bevel this way, you want to keep this this way, and again, there just can't be anything. A little pencil lead size something hung up in there will throw your neck off. So I'm going to work on this a little bit. This is boring stuff. Like I said, you will know when 400 grit sandpaper goes over something smooth this way, this way, this way, and this way, and this stuff is off of here. You're ready to go. Okay, so we're getting where we're good to go here. I'm going to put down a couple pieces of neck cut off here um, because I'm going to have to be able to clamp here. So I'm going to put the cork, cork paper coated neck cut off up there. The neck is going to, or the body of the guitar is going to sit right there. Um, 
and I run over this part of the body right here to make sure that there's nothing sticking up. Again, it passes the 400 grit sandpaper test. And now, what I need to do is take off these, this custom Laurent bomb part pit guard because I don't want it tore up. And it's going to be right in the way of where we're going to clamp here. I hope you saw this episode. This was really cool. And then we've got this back here. I can just swing this out of the way like so. There we go. Good. Make sure that that's not going to scribe up the top of the guitar any more than it is. And then you can see here that this can ride like this, this can ride like this, and then I can clamp here once I get everything on. Again, the fingerboard is going to come past here. Once I get the fingerboard on, everything adjusted in the slot, again, everything passes the 400 grit sandpaper test, everything is beveled okay, we're good. Slip this in here, slip this over the fingerboard, put my neck cradle out here where it's just, it's not going to push up, it's not going to let the thing sag, but this will all be pushed down like this. So let's get on this. All right, we're going to take our acid brush now, and you can see that this hide glue is nice and hot. Can you see the viscosity of it? It just runs. Now when it's not hot, it doesn't do that. We don't want to glob this on all over. We want to put it on plenty, but we don't need to glob it. Make sure that there's no chunks. Make sure you don't get it where you don't need it to be for sure. Okay. There we go. And the main thing is it goes in this channel right here, this beveled channel. Make sure you get it right there and right there. Now, some people argue about, do you want to put it on the back? Well, it's going to mate up against that surface right there. So yeah, that'll be good. I don't care if it gets in the hole that we drilled to put the bolt through. I hope you can see what I'm doing. I'm not paying a lot of attention to the camera. Now, what I want you to notice is that this stuff is staying workable, and that's what I want. Um, if we're using another kind of glue that's not hot, that's a different story. So we're going to do the same thing here. This brush is nice. Again, make sure that there are no... Sometimes this hide glue will form a skin up on top. You want to make sure that that's not happening. You want to make sure you got a wet rag around in case there's any squeeze out, like so. This I'm going to get in here plenty because I'm only going to have one shot at this because the next time it'll be done, it'll be done by somebody who's much younger than me. I'm just going to put a tad right here. Remember, this all gets heat activated. That's why they use hide glue. So one more little coat there. And now we'll squeeze this down in. I'm going to get this neck set up out of the way. Oh yeah, I can feel that. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to clamp this up. I'm going to put this head rest down there. We're just barely, barely supports it that way I don't need 17 hands and I'm gonna bolt or clamp this up right now all right there we go we got this thing glued up we got every kind of scrap apparatus there is here we got these pac-man looking clamps we got spool clamps we've got a regular clamp and anyway the bottom line is we come across the body here we put a piece of cork uh, material here stacked deep and then clamped everything here and then we come to the heel right here 
and you can see that there's a piece of cork paper there and then cork paper under here and clamp this so we're going to let this set up the hide glue will be set up in a little bit but we're going to turn this around and take care of some of these surface cracks on the body let's have a look at that quick all right there we go so we got our hide glue um let me grab my pointer can't do it without my pointer we got the hide glue warming up over there the lights on and we got our acid brush and we're going to add another culprit to the team and that's this little rubber suction cup i think you can hang what do they call them things dream catchers or something off your trailer house window with this or something like that but anyway we also have some paper towel we have water around and then we have the finest tape dispenser in the world now look at this it's got suction cups on the bottom and it's padded so the nice thing about this let me show you if you're doing binding jobs you ever do binding job i gave an example of a binding job is it right up there right about now if it's not it's on the other side uh, but you need a ton of tape because you're doing this constantly when you're doing a binding job right and so if you have one of these you just flip this down and there's a section right behind here where you just put your finger in and drop it down and you can really mass produce tape strips like that so finest tape dispenser in the world now when you're working on these old guitars that's one thing if you're working on a newer guitar that's got a nice finish there are some tapes that the tack on them will take the finish off of the guitar we don't have to worry about that here but what we're looking at here is we got a big crack surface crack running right there you followed up now the tone bars in this thing there are big long strips here um, I did uh, hover up there I already gave you an I card to something called the restaurant junk pile exact same model guitar it's got tone bars that run down through here and sometimes when things get loaded up and the bridge isn't right or something like that other things start to crack those tone bars work loose a little bit or the wood between them starts to break out and stuff so these are surface cracks i've already put a light in and figured out that um, they don't go all the way through so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to tape off around where the cracks start. And then we're going to put a little hide glue on here. And we're going to push the hide glue in with the suction cup. When you're using a suction cup to do this, you simply put the hide glue on. And then you start before the crack and you push down all the way right on the crack. If you're jumping up and down, what happens is the same force that pushes the glue down into the crack pulls out every time uh you do your your um you, you lift the thing up so it's a continuous before all the way down and that heat glue high glue being hot is a good thing so let's get this out of the way and free up so you can see what i'm doing i'm going to tape off a couple more areas and then i'll show you what's happening okay so i got some wet paper towel i'm going to wet wet the suction cup a little bit and then i got this high glue it's heated up now of course, when it's heating up, you'll get sometimes a skin form on top. You don't want that, but we're just going to take this brush and go over this real lightly. And brush that hide glue on there like this. Right where the crack is. And I put the tape on here because it kind of limits where the hide glue goes. We've got a couple of big surface cracks here. The ones that run into the ends of the F holes. I really want to make sure that those are okay. Let's just do a couple of these here. Again, the hide glue is hot. And so we wet the suction cup and we start up here where the crack starts a little bit before and we just run it down like this and we don't pick it up until we, we hit past the end of the crack and we just keep doing that like that. Up and down, real easy. And then up here, same thing. Start at the edge, bring it past the F hole, like so. Now, while the glue is still warm, 
when it starts to tack up and we can feel it, we're going to pull the tape off and we're going to take some warm water and we're just going to go over the glue and get it where it's not tacked up and smeared all over the top of the guitar and globs because we're going to want to make this blend in. But it's really that easy. You need hide glue, a suction cup, some kind of brush, and some water. Easy money. Um, when we take the, the clamps off and stuff, we're going to take care of this uh, binding that's cut loose here. All right, guys, uh, some time has passed enough for this glue to dry up. So I'm going to take these spool clamps off. These are great, um, especially if you can make them yourself. I like these clamps that are down on the end here because they kind of get you set up. This is kind of a hassle when you're trying to first set this up and rush because the glue... Um, is drying and you're worried about that but again see we use this cork paper everywhere and you can see where the frets pressed in so if I would have just used this that would have been been a mistake but now push the back down these are quick release and they're pretty easy to get off this whole thing is like a, a house of cards and until you get a couple of clamps on, but there we go. It glued up nice, not moving at all. That's what we wanted. Now I'm going to show you a couple other little things we're going to do before we run a bolt through the neck here. Let me get this stuff put up. All right, guys, before. Uh, we run the bolt through the neck. couple things to deal with here. We put hide glue in these surface cracks. Everything is okay there. It all worked out. Now the top of this is pretty dirty, so I'm going to use some of this Howard Feed and Wax, and we're going to use the special rag only for this. This was the only rag ever really meant for this. Luther's fight, Luthier's fight over it everywhere but we're going to put that on here and hydrate the top of this thing while we're doing this but uh main thing here is before i put a bolt through here i'm going to be going down in here with a bunch of extensions and whatever but this binding is loose do you see that i've pointed this out before so what we're going to do is we're going to use this little l scraper it's pretty handy um we pull this back a little bit there's a binding channel cut right there I'm going to go over that both sides and make sure there's nothing sticking up and make sure on the binding itself there's no old fragments of that. Then once that's done, we're going to use bind all. This is good stuff. Always remember when you're popping the top off of this, if it's heated up or something, and you pull this open, you want to be ready for it to run out. Don't let that happen on the top, but we're going to smear that in there with, you know it, bacon flavored toothpick. We're going to put binding, bind all adhesive in here and then we're going to take I keep showing you this but watch this you need binding tape for a bunch of this and you can just grab this and get off 20 strips just like that real easy gotta have one of these you'll also notice that I have regular masking tape here and I've put that around here because I don't want to mess that up because God knows this has never been messed up before right All right, now that the binding is done, we can pe peel off this tape up here that protected 
the top of the guitar like so and I want to point out here that these two pieces of tape will not be removed because there is a mark there and there and that lines up with the center of the floating bridge so we've already got our scale marked off and those marks will need to line up for our intonation to be right now this stuff is the best I've run across for cleaning up old junky guitars it's got lemon oil in it and it's got some kind of wax in it that I think is related to bees or something so I'm just gonna put this on here and you're gonna see this soak in pretty quickly because it will rehydrate things and now that those cracks are fixed I don't want them busting open again the main problem with this guitar was that yeah this bridge I've got enough room to get under there so let's make sure that we get that done there too but we want this thing to hydrate back up we don't want it to crack again and then of course the person that this is going to will know better than to hang it in a garage somewhere in Southern California so when it gets hot and then it gets so cold in Southern California that people have two cardigan sweaters tied around their neck anyway that's what will mess this up so you can see it does wonders for the finish but more so it sinks in of course once I pull these off and the bridge is going to go and I'll put a little bit underneath there but that's that I'm going to do the sides and the back as well I want to put a piece of masking tape over the bottom of this trapeze because when it comes in contact with this, we don't want to bust that up. Now I'm going to turn it over and make the pattern. We are going to put matchbooks on this neck here. And so I'm going to flip this over and we're going to trace out the pattern because we're going to have to digitally enlarge the matchbooks. All right, here we go. We're going to take a common manila folder. We are going to put it underneath the neck like this. We're going to take one of my love pencils. We're going to mark where the nut starts. So that means I can put this up here a ways and get close to where the nut starts. I'm going to make a mark here and here where the nut starts. And then I'm just going to run the pencil down the side of the neck like this. I'm not getting part of the fingerboard because it's back underneath there but once I pick this up I can just lay a straight edge along here and continue that edge. I'm going to cut to the inside of the line and then that way I can put the matchbooks on here, digitize them, drag them out wide enough to fit the matchbook size that's needed for the particular part of the neck now you know that matchbooks typically fit, standard matchbooks typically fit a standard cigar box guitar or license plate guitar neck. They're about that wide. But in the case here, we have to do this. I'm going to give you a link. I'm screwed up here as to what side is what. But how to match a matchbook a six string guitar neck. It'll be up there or there. Wherever you see that thing popping up, that's the first indicator that that just might be... Where it is. So I'm going to cut this out, get the matchbook set up, and that way everything is done when we start drilling into here. The last thing I want to do while this is turned over, the back of this guitar neck is super, super dirty. So we're going to take our stuff here, our Howard stuff again, and we're going to put a coating of this on here and let it soak in because it will take off some of that grime that we're looking to get rid of and it'll soften up some of these marks on here that I'm going to need to get rid of before. Again, the idea is that we are going to keep this thing looking junky, but we want to make sure everything is hydrated. All right, guys, it's time to do some guitar orthopedics. We glued the neck on. I'm flexing on it. Nothing's happening. Yeah, that was an excessive amount of weight. Um, 
if my exit interview for my last appointment from my doctor is any indicator. Anyway, remember this, we're gonna put a bolt in it. We've got a small washer there to serve as a shoulder. We're gonna put it in like this. And of course we drilled this hole, pilot hole, before we glued the neck on. Now it's time to drill all the way through and that will tell us how long our bolt needs to be because I guarantee you this one is not long enough. So we are gonna take this long drill bit and we're going to go through and the minute it breaks through we're going to take this piece of tape and put it on here and then mark it and that will give us the desired length of said bolt you know I am a guitar orthopedic surgeon so let me get back to my work here before the patient dies even further off to hardware store okay we've determined that our bolt needs to be about four inches long and we want to seat that bolt the head of it in here deep enough to where we can put a piece of relic wood over the top of this and hide it of course we'll know it's there but I want to cover that up and the way we're going to do this is we're going to take a Forstner bit it's just a little bit bigger than the size of the head of our bolt and that's going to give us a shoulder so we've drilled the hole big enough where this is a tight fit so you're going to have a shoulder there and a little washer to kind of keep everything together so we take our Forstner bit we lay it in here like this notice that I've taped off the neck of the guitar here so it doesn't get battered up while we're doing this and we're going to bury the head of this Forstner bit into the neck far enough to seat this and give ourselves enough room for some relic wood. That pocket is about as deep as that for Forstner bit is. It's the depth that matches that. So this will fall in there like so. So we're going to put a washer on the end of this and run it almost all the way in. Okay, when we're running this in, we want to make sure our torque setting on the drill is low. In case something starts to hang up and bind up, we want to make sure that it uh, clicks out before we break something out or strip the, the head of this thing out. Now, when we're taking this in, we want to go in, not all the way to seat it out, because we're going to have to put this nylon insert bolt or nut in there, and that's going to be a pain the way it is. But we want to make sure that there's enough room to turn that. If this is bottomed all the way out, that doesn't give us any room to get the knot on there and get it started and then hold it and then use the turn it in from this side to get us where we need to be. If you're trying to do that from the inside, it's a nightmare. So we're going to run this in close, but not all the way. Okay, so that's good enough. When we run it the rest of the way in, this will be buried in there, and then we can do what we need to do with that piece of wood. It will need to be big enough to come out here. It, there will be a lot of work to do, but we'll sand it off and file it off so it's smooth with the profile of the neck. <clears throat> okay, guys. Welcome to the hellish nightmare that is bolting on a neck like this. Oh, I need you to know that Mr. Power Neck Stand, Mr. Power Guitar Neck Rest was virtually powerless and helpless in this operation. Anyway, now that it's in there, I didn't film the inside part and all that because I did not want my viewing audience subject to the swearing. Uh, gross profanity and just generally unaccepted unnatural acts that went with this so let's move along and the first thing we can do that is by going into denial that it never happened so we're going to take this piece of wood right here this dowel we can't have this like there so we're going to put 
that piece of doweling in there. We're going to take the love pencil. See, I'm already starting to get better. Y'all going to pray for me. I, I didn't do this on Sunday. I did it on Saturday, and that's there's a reason for that. Anyway, we're going to glue that in there. We're going to cut it off, and then we're going to tape all this off, and that will let us smooth this over. There is a place up here where there used to be a strap button. We're not going to put that anymore. We're going to take, watch this slick trick if I don't cut my hand off. You, you file down the end of a piece of relic wood. This is a tree from somewhere important. And then you just do that. You see that? Use the plug cutter. And then we'll use a Forstner bit and put this in here. Okay, guys, let's catch up. I have, this is all things neck. While we're doing the neck, we're going to do everything that has to do with the neck. So I've put a set of Gibson tuners on this thing. We've taken off the truss rod cover, and we have lubricated the truss rod, and not with, voila, Marvel Mystery Oil is waiting to take you away, wherever it's taking you away. But this is good stuff. And we're laying out all the matchbooks here, getting those sized and digitized. And now I've taken off this plastic truss rod cover or what, whatever petrochemical confabulation this was in the 1950s and traced it out on, that's right, what used to be a 1956 California license plate that became the pit guard for the California junk pile. Uh, where's that episode? Is it up there or is it over here? I forget. I'm still confused here. Okay, let's catch up on the back side. There are those Gibson tuners I was telling you about. Very nice. Um, nickel from 1927, the year of the great Mississippi flood. We've got this dowel, piece of doweling that's in there hiding the bolt, the head of the bolt going through the neck there. Hey, when it comes to cutting radius stuff here, rather than filing and scuffing up what's around it, these 
scroll saw blades are awesome. You see they band, you can hold them, cut to a radius, and then of course there's nothing like finishing off the edge. You ride the edge with a sharp chisel and go around like that. And then we've got this piece of relic wood right here that was actually collected from the spot where in his search for Mississippi Fred McDowell, George Mitchell found Fred McDowell in 1967. Thank God for my friends in Mississippi. I wanted to point out here that the strap button is off to the side here. If you put a strap button right here, after a while, yanking the guitar around off and on, that screw will start to side load back and forth and up and down and work loose. If you put it over here, what happens is a strap end comes around here and gets cradled. So a lot of the loading that would have been on the end right there, kind of like playing crack the whip on a ice skating rink if you've ever been in Wisconsin when it's 20 below zero and they tell you to go outside and you're the kid at the end. Yeah, you get it, right? Well, if you don't, you should move to Wisconsin for winter and then tell me what it's like. But you don't have to because I already know. Anyway, that's where we're at on the back, and you'll notice that there's a lot of chick flick teal wherever I have done a repair. All right, this is looking pretty good. Got everything done with the back, coin in, tuners on, strap button on, relic wood in. Everything's chick flick tealed up back here where we hid the neck bolt. I like the way the matches turned out. I really did. Matchbooks look good. Um, truss rod cover, too. Now... Just a couple more things to do to end this neck episode. And that is put a knot on it. Check. And then we're going to do the fret markers. Now this binding here is pretty thin. Uh, it sits down a channel. This binding was done. Uh, somebody did a good job on it. Now I don't want to drill there and possibly chip out the fingerboard or something. So I'm going to put the fret markers down below and that dark color wood is a nice contrast for the fret markers. So what I've done is I've taken and marked off. I'm going to put a fret marker in at 3, 5, 7 and double them up at 12. So I've taken an all, uh, made my marks like so, just like this. Tap in where I've put a pencil mark. You want to hit these too hard, but that way when you start to, to take a drill, you can pop the bit in without messing anything up. And then it's just go along. You don't have to go too deep. Just pop it in there. Run it down a little bit, like so. There we go. Then it's just popping a little glue. Notice I'm leaving the masking tape on here. It's actually binding tape. I'm leaving that on here because when I file these, it's going to be a lot easier not to mess everything up. But we just take the material and put it down in the hole where we've drilled, nip it off. Don't use your fret pliers on this. Everybody likes to use fret pliers, but then they wonder why they don't work. Every once in a while, you got to tap it in a little bit like that. All right, there's the second one. Now we're just going to take our pliers. Our pliers are file. And we're just going to file this down till we see a perfect circle like so again this tape being on here is a good thing because you won't file into your neck like I said you, when you see a circle your filing is done grasshopper there we go and then we just pull this off ooh Look at that. Clean one owner. Perfect. Let me get this nut glued on and I'll see you at the end.
All right, guys, that is a long episode, but um, you can see we have done a lot to the neck of this guitar, and it's come a really long way since I found it hanging on the wall in a garage in East Los Angeles months ago. Um, you can tell from what you're seeing go on to this guitar that there's some pretty high dollar parts going into it and a lot of work going into it. So it gets pricey pretty quickly. Uh, in the next episode, you're going to see this thing get a pickup in it. And in fact, it's the kind of pickup you would have put on a K guitar um, that would have been period correct for this gu guitar or something we call a Kleenex box pickup. Uh, they also made configurations that were gold foils and one called a speed hump and I've got one of those on or two of those on an airline that come out of the factory that way. But unlike the guitar that we did that was just like this for Troy Murrow we put those hot rod Gibson pickups in and we had all of those uh, tone bar things and a lot of reinforcement to do. We've had to do some reinforcement with this one as well but in the next episode, we are going to put this pickup on here. Very few holes to drill, but what's going to be tricky is we are going to run the wiring to the point where you can't see it, and there are going to be no visible volume or tone control, so you want to see that. We're going to use some fancy thing out of Europe that lets you hide um, your tone and, and uh, volume control like you would on a Tesla or something. So... Um, what was a less than $100 guitar is now starting to climb up there in price. So, uh, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something along the way. We do a lot of different things, and hopefully you pick something up. But this is all neck, all the time. Now we're going to get into this thing finally making sound. So give me a like, subscribe if you ha have it, and there will be a playlist for this history of this guitar called the East L.A. Cutaway, showing up at the end of the video. So, hey, I'll see you next time, and we'll hear this next time.